This video will demonstrate how Intex sets up and performs a compression load test for small shaft deep foundation elements. This could include helical piers or hollow bar micropiles. The actual components of the load test may vary by individual project and the proper current ASTM methodology should be followed. Prior to performing any test or material installation, review the most current methodology documentation to verify that the equipment and plan steps are consistent with the requirements of the test. This could include things like proper calibration of equipment or ensuring that the elements are going to be laid out in a manner consistent with the test requirements. The test load setup includes the following components. The test element, reaction elements, ram and pumps, primary load test beam, and spreader beams. Be sure to consult with local authorities and the existing property owner to determine if there is any concern that would hinder installation at the planned test location. With any underground operation, it is important to first verify that no existing utilities or obstructions exist below the location of planned element installation. Another common safety concern is overhead utilities. Be sure that the proper distance is maintained between equipment and utilities at all times, especially if they carry power. Other types of utilities other than power lines may also carry a sufficient amount of power that can be damaging. Be sure to follow proper procedures for protecting your personnel and equipment. Assess all forms of potential danger that could result in personnel injury and equipment damage. Additionally, ensure that the proper personal protective equipment is used. If you utilize the Intech test load rental equipment, a project job box including the components needed to perform the load test should be included. Check the components included in the box match the provided parts list and that the RAM pressure calibration sheet is included. Establish the layout for your test and reaction elements so they will line up properly with the load frame apparatus. Install the test and reaction elements at the locations marked out in the previous step. Be sure to maintain vertical element installation, regularly checking that the element is plumb. When terminating the reaction elements, it is important to end the element with enough above grade height of bar. This is so that the bar material has enough length to pass through the load frame apparatus and be terminated on the proper side of the spreader beam. Install the test element, also making sure to maintain a plumb installation at multiple times during the installation. Install a bearing plate or termination cap onto the test element. This cap or plate should be capable of withstanding the highest loads of the test without failing. Place the ram onto the bearing plate or termination of the test element. Place cribbing on both sides of the test element to slightly above the height of the top of the ram. It should be low enough such that the ram will not be fully extended through the load test. Carefully bring the primary load test beam over the test element and place it on top of the curbing materials. Care should be taken to properly align the primary load test beam with the original layout configuration. Also, the load test beam should be centered over the test ram to prevent risk of eccentricity or movement of the beam off the ram. Place the spreader beams on top of the primary load test beam at their designated locations. Install the thread bars into the reaction elements through the slots or holes of the spreader beams. The primary load test beam should be centered under the spreader beams. Install a bearing plate if required and bearing nut on top of each of the reaction elements above the spreader beams. Do not fully tighten the nut to the bearing plate, but the nut should be close to the plates or beam. Attach hydraulic hoses to complete the system for the hydraulic pump, test ram, and pressure gauges. Once the load frame apparatus has been installed, test that the beams will be level during the load test while the ram is extended. Extend the ram to the alignment load, lifting the load test beam up to the bearing nuts which are above the spreader beams. With the test setup lifted, check all the beams to see if they are level. Assess which nuts on the reaction beams are high or low and should be adjusted to get the setup to be level. Slowly let the beam back down by relieving the pressure on the ram. Once the pressure is removed, adjust the previously noted nuts up or down on the thread bars. Repeat this process until the setup will be sufficiently level during testing. Set up an independent reference frame adjacent to the test pile. 
This frame should adhere to the requirements of the ASTM test methodology. The frame should be rigid and founded sufficiently far away from the test apparatus that it is not affected by the test. Prior to performing the load test, review target loads and the RAM pressure load calibration sheets. Be sure to understand the target pressures that will need to be achieved at each load step. Perform the load test by extending and retracting the RAM, advancing to the required loads in each load step. The interval, load sequence, and hold times are typically based on the specific steps that are required by the engineer of record for the project. Record the deflections on each of the two dial gauges at the time intervals required. These deflections will be averaged per recording. Once the load test has been completed, verify with the engineer of record for the project with test acceptance, and then proceed with production installation. 